Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'm Chrisman from, uh, from Synthesis. Uh, so let's talk about parallel education. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. OK, great. Um, so yeah, my, uh, my co-founder, Josh, uh, started a school for, for Elon Musk at, uh, at SpaceX for Elon's kids and some of the other SpaceX families. And you know, I think a lot of people are really excited about this. It got a lot of attention um, because you know, maybe this is going to be Elon's next company and he's going to fix education for us. Uh, but he really just wanted the school for his own kids. And so you know, Josh and I kind of realized if we're going to fix education, you know, it would be up to us. And so we, uh, we started a company uh, to kind of scale up the innovative ideas from that school and make them available to people who uh, you know, aren't billionaires with their own rocket company but still want the best education for their kids. And I think it's, uh, it's just important to reflect for a second, like why does someone like Elon, who's, who's clearly got a lot to do, um, you know, what, what makes him care about education? I think it comes down to this fundamental thing that education is about values. People find it uh, very uncomfortable to uh, have their kids educated by someone who, who doesn't precisely share their values. And Elon's not alone there. I think the, the kind of like the falling trust that we see in the system, which, which is already quite low, um, is driven at least partially uh, by this values conflict. And I think, by the way, that we are absolutely right uh, to fight over the values in our education systems uh, because the values that we embody in education uh, become the civilizations that we create. Our civilizations are downstream of education. Uh, so two very different societies here, ancient Sparta and Athens. Uh, the Spartan system, very rigid. It's kind of designed to get people to fight in this phalanx. And you know, the idea is like you have the right answer and you need to just execute, then this rigidity is okay. Uh, but of course the Spartans uh, you know, are, are gone now and our civilization is much more based on the ancient Athenians who had a more open-minded approach. The idea that you don't you're not in possession of the truth, but you can come closer to it, and by doing so, you can make progress. And so the values of synthesis are, you know, essentially that there's, there's knowledge and wisdom in the past that we want to pass on, and, and there's beauty there as well. Um, but we don't want to pass those things on so we can return to some past. We want to actually move forward and make progress and continue to create uh, new and, and wondrous things. Uh, so in a word, uh, you know, building things is good, actually. And for the people in this room, this might seem obvious and, and uncontroversial, uh, but you know, it's, uh, there's this idea that's kind of endemic in the system now. Um, I just pulled this one headline from Oregon, but I could pull dozens like this from, from around the world, uh, where, where people kind of have this zero-sum mentality that if some people learn and excel, that that comes at the expense of everybody else. And that is a, uh, that, that's a, that's a zero-sum way of looking at the world, and if it's left unchecked, it will keep us all um, equally ignorant and, and impoverished and, and will destroy civilization. So you, you can think about this in terms of, of Balaji's question, you know, do, do you go for loyalty, voice, or, or exit? And loyalty is really tough when you don't share the values of the system. Uh, so, so what people like Gary are trying to do here is, is voice, and you know, I, I admire the chutzpah, but I think it's gonna be really tough when people are kinda hell-bent on not teaching math and science, the idea that you're gonna make them uh, sort of do it by force, uh, and that they're gonna be somehow really good at it, I, I, you know, I think that's gonna be really tough. Uh, so there's, there's this other approach, which, uh, which Tesla has kinda shown us the way on this, which is sort of a, um, you know, like a voice through exit. So the idea there is you build something just that's wildly better than the current system, and, uh, and, and maybe you can get the system then to, to pay attention and to adapt and change the way the car companies have embraced electric vehicles. So, uh, you know, back to what we're, we're actually building. Um, the, the, uh, you know, one, one of Elon's critiques of the system, which I think is really good, is that uh, you know, the, the way that school does it is they would kind of give you like a course on, on wrenches and a course on screwdrivers. They would kind of teach you the tool instead of the problem. And what you should actually do is just give kids an engine to take apart. And then that way when they reach for the tool, there's meaning there. There's a much more engaging and effortless way to learn. So the way they approach this at the SpaceX school is you put kids in teams because most problem solving happens in teams. The problems we're all working on, I imagine we have to work together with a team. You put them in teams, they have to collaborate there, and they compete with other teams, which gives us this fun kind of you know, competitive spirit to it. And you're giving the kids these complex problems that are in the forms of, of games and, and simulations. And the problems are fake, but they feel real to the kids, and there feels like there's some real stakes to them. 
And we use this as a platform to teach them the kind of meta problem solving skills. So the things that, that we're all using every day, how do you communicate effectively? How do you work together? How do you make decisions under uncertainty and, uh, and learn from the environment and adapt? And the kids really love it. And when I, when I saw this at the SpaceX school, I was just blown away. Everyone who sees it kind of has the same reaction. You just can't believe the remarkable skills that these kids can develop at a young age. And this is initially what made me uh, feel like we had to start a company and scale this up. So th this is sort of an idea that is uh, you know, orthogonal to the existing system. It, it's it's uh, very much outside the system. It's not really stepping on any toes. Uh, so let's talk about the next thing we have, which is a product called uh, Tutor, which is, is more a direct uh, shot across the bow. And I think uh, Balaji captures the spirit of that uh, pretty, pretty well here. So the idea is you can uh, you know, replace the, the woke teachers with, uh, with AI uh, teachers, or, or you know, ac actually even better, uh, tutors. Uh, tutoring is, uh, is far and away the best way to learn. So there's a researcher called uh, Benjamin Bloom who coined this idea, the Bloom's Two Sigma problem. And uh, you know, the idea there is that uh, you can take kids with tutoring from 50th to 99th percentile, which is kind of the difference between uh, community college and, and the Ivy League. We can do this with tutoring, and, and we can't really do it any other way. The elites have always known this, which is why Alexander the Great was tutored by Aristotle. And of course, the problem is, uh, you know, there's not enough Aristotles to go around. And all the efforts, the kind of holy grail of education technology is to create a digital Aristotle, Aristotle that we can uh, use to reach every kid. Uh, so this is, uh, this is data from a DARPA project. They spent about $100 million trying to create a digital tutor. And I don't have time to go into the data here, but uh, if you Google uh, less wrong uh, DARPA tutor, then, then you can do a deep dive on that. The upshot of it for now is that they tried to solve Bloom's Two Sigma problem and it, for the US Navy to teach people IT, and they accidentally overshot it by about an order of magnitude. So not only can we have uh, digital tutors that are as effective as the best human tutors, but we can have something that's far, far better. And let's see if I can do a quick, uh, I'll, I'll play a little video for you guys. Can you so fill you can out see the, the whole demo. table now? Give it a try. So, wait, no, no. Let's take a look at the highlighted square and start there. Go ahead and fill it out when you're ready. Um. <clears throat> okay. Look carefully at what pieces you've put into this square and note how you've read them rows first, then columns. Let's do the same thing with this larger square now. Three times two. That doesn't make sense. Good. I'll unlock the rest of the widget for you to continue filling it. Keep an eye out for those tricky rows and columns. So let's go in the first column. Four times two. So let's go in the four and then to the two. Oh yeah. Um two times five. Okay, that's not how that's not the right one. Okay, let's take a look at the two highlighted squares. It's just a convention, but for this table we'll read the pieces as rows times columns. Go ahead and swap them to make sure they're on the correct spot. Okay, so let's go in the first column. Wow, amazing work. You're on top of this. I think I get the pattern. You have probably noticed that I colored the dots in a bit of a strange way. How many dots are there of each color? All right. So you, can, uh, you guys can give this a try for yourself. What I want to point out uh, there is you can see that the, the kids really like it, and, and they like it because it's not boring. It's giving them something to do, and then when they make mistakes, it's sort of jumping in and probing for their misconceptions and helping them to guide themselves to the answers. And you know, the evidence from these, the DARPA trials where they pioneered this approach is that you can learn about 20x faster uh, this way, so you can speed run the system. Uh, so try it out for yourselves. Uh, yeah, there's a free demo up here, and if you have kids, uh, then uh, you can sign up at census.com. Uh, and that's, that's my time. Thank you.